Yeah, it's good of you to come in, man. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. Hope so. Hope so. I think just having good conversation around the topic is a step forward, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. You just want to be about six to eight inches from this mic. Anyway, cheers, man. It's good to cheers. finally sit and chat. So, should we should we start by talking more about the RM? Yeah, of course. Is that how you call it, the RM? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. yeah DRM. Let, let, let's start there, man. Let's yeah, let's find out more about how that started. Um, so, we're a clothing brand that raises awareness for mental health and reduces stigma as well. Um, we started, obviously, you know, after the loss of my brother, younger brother Ollie, to uh, to suicide. Um, it's just, yeah, there was a lot of difficult times that went on during that and that's just kind of something that came from that. Um, in terms of how it actually came about, um, I'd always, wa as growing up, I'd always watch my mum customising clothing. Mm. Um, so, you know, she couldn't go out and buy me the latest like football top. So you, she used to stitch my name on the back of a t-shirt yeah. with a number and things like that. So, I'd, and per for her as well, she always was customising jackets and things like that. So it was always good to, it's something I've always seen and I'd always wanted to get involved with. So Here we go. The jug of water now, yeah. Aha, jug is Don't worry, we're, we're only live. Thank you. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> so how old um, How old was Ollie when when he took his own life? Um, so he was 18 at the time. Wow. So yeah, just getting into um, adulthood, mm. really. And it just was something that came completely out of the blue. I mean, people say, oh, did, didn't you notice this and that and the other, but no, he was just himself doing his, his usual things. He was always up late, you know, on the computer, up at odd times, but it wasn't something that, had, it wasn't him personally that had changed. Like, oh, you can notice a difference when someone is acting like this, mm. you know, you may want to, you know, to speak to him. Um, it was, that was how he was all the time. So it's just one of those. So that's difficult. central to your drive an ambition now right yeah 100 percent. yeah so how how old in relation w was ollie to you how uh four years so at the time i was 22 old. yeah so there's a lot to register i guess as mm. a, well, any age but 22 and 18. it's one of those i think i mean at the time you know i didn't really know anything about mental health at all yeah um it, i was more of the you know just kind of man up and get on with it not even that just i didn't even understand what it was um, but having to, you know, go through that journey and then understand it all, like, all oh, right, this is this is what's been going on that whole time, or yeah. this is why you, you know you feel like this. It's 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 been crazy, really. Okay. How old are you now? Uh, Thirty. So, so eight years ago. Mm. Eight years. But what have you learned then? So you say like you didn't really understand it then. I'm I'm still not quite sure I understand it at all. Like it doesn't. The thing with mental health for me is it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to. And uh, sometimes I don't know what you think. The harder I try and work it out, the more of a battle it becomes. Mm. I think it's just like a journey that we're all on. There's no, you know, you're well, that you get unwell, and then you get better again. It's just all part of that up and down sort of process of life, really. Mm. Um, I mean, I've just learned so much about myself personally and, yeah, just about kind of what mental health is on a basic level as well like what it actually means to look after your mental health and things like that yeah no, absolutely do you sit there and like contemplate and think like why would ollie do that at 18 like if, if he said like you, like you didn't know like it came mm. out of the blue like surely that tortured you for a while or still oh yeah potentially does right oh yeah it still does now but at the time 100 percent um you know when in regards to like family you feel like they're always going to be there especially someone who's younger than you you just presume that you're going to grow up old and like that relationship grows and, and whatnot but to lose someone out of the blue like that it's it's you know if 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 he was 80 and you know i was like whatever 84 then it's that process of you know you're getting older so this kind of thing's going to happen but at 18 you know you've still got so much of your life to live yeah absolutely what was he like man what, what was his character like he was uh well i call him like a good-hearted rebel <laughs> so he's always getting up to no good, yeah. uh, cheeky, but he had a good heart and yeah. you know, he was a, was a really good person to be around. Yeah. What battles and issues do you think he was fighting? Like, now that you can probably, there's a, I'm guessing a bit of space between mm. when it happened and now, do you, do you kind of have an insight into some of, the, some of the demons he was fighting and stuff? 
I mean, yeah, I've obviously, I think, like, the coming of, coming of age thing, you know, you're turning 18, uh, me and my mum were saying, you know, like, you know, you're 18 now, but it's time to go out and kind of not fight for yourself in, in a way, but you're in charge. And I think with everything else going on, you know, in his life, that mm. was like a big, like, you know, I'm 80, because it wasn't soon after his 18th birthday when, when it happened. So I get the sort of feeling like that was, you know, part of it. But, you know, just been, just in general, growing up as a, as a teenager is difficult for everybody and you, everyone's struggling with identity, like who am I, who do I want to be, things like that. So there's that compounded by the other stuff as well, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so. Some of the latest stats I've been hearing is that, especially in teenage boys and girls now, that's kind of like who's being affected most. So I think predominantly, like several years ago, it was men in their 40s and 50s. I think mm. the churn of social media now is catching up with the, the younger generation because they're born into that. They don't know any different. Whereas you and I can probably separate a little bit and remember what yeah. life used to be like before we shared everything <laughs> on social media. So um, I think it does have uh, have a bit of a contribution. Uh, do you mind me asking like, h how he took his own life? Uh, hanging, unfortunately. Right. So yeah, it was. I was at work and I got this phone call from my mum, and she said, oh, "Just let you know when you come home from work today, there probably there might be police at the house and things like that, but don't worry." So then that was like the end of that phone call, and I'm there like. You know, because he was a cheeky chap. I was like, you know, he had been brought home by the police before for doing this, that, and the other. Nothing crazy, but just being cheeky, I suppose. So I was like, okay, what's he done now? I've gotten into trouble, things like that. And then I was cycling home, you know, all sorts of thoughts are running through my head, like, you know, catastrophizing it, like, oh, you know, could something have bad really happened here? And then I get onto my road, and then I see the, like, the ambulance and the f a few police cars, and I, that's when it, like, my heart sunk, and I knew that this was you bad straight off yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I got to the door of my house and then the police officer opened the door and then I was off and then that at that moment there that's when I feel like kind of like I just left my body I was like nah this can't be happening it was like my life had paused at that point because I was like this something bad is, is about to happen and it's like I didn't want to kind of go through with that I walked into my living room and then my mum just runs towards me and hugs me and is crying. And at that point, I know, you know, I know what's happened. And then the police officer tells me, that I'm afraid, you know, your brother's taken his own life. And it was like, just numbness, that feeling. Who's family then? So there's your mum, who's dad about or? Yeah, he's about, he's in uh, yeah. Coventry. He right. came over um, an hour or so afterwards. Um, but it was like me and my mum at that point. Yeah, no um, sisters, no other brothers. Uh, yeah, I've got um, brothers and sisters, but they yeah. live with my dad. Right, okay. So it's been like a diff, even that as well, like going through loss with them on kind of that side of things. Yeah. So you know that kind of splits up a, a family yeah. in terms of how people grieve yeah. differently as well. Yeah. But luckily, we're managing to see each other more and stuff now, which is which is good. How did you handle it, like from the off? <laughs> Terribly, like I said, uh, from that from that point, it was just a numbness. I just sat there like, it was like, right, let's kind of just c compartmentalize, forget about it and just try and carry on with, with life. Um, they were like, oh, would you like to go up and see him? So I was like, yeah, of course. So I went upstairs onto the landing and you know, he was just lying there. And I just said a few things to him, just talking to him, I just kind of sat there. And then I came downstairs and then, you know, I don't feel like you're at the capacity to, well, I certainly haven't anyway to, to deal with what just happened. Sure, yeah. Because like, the last time I spoke to him, we were talking about cars, he, you know, he was into, like, to, he loved taking things apart and putting things back together again. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, you know, what part I was gonna buy for my car and how, you know, he was gonna help and things like that. And then fast forward 24 hours, like, I can't have another conversation with him at all. Yeah, were you, were you angry at any point of like, you know what? Why? Why would you do that? You know, pain you're putting us through. Was there any of that? Was it a t was it a mix of everything? Or was it like yeah. I don't know what I feel? Like I think at the start I was just like I don't know what, what I feel. I just feel n nothing towards like from that point. You know, people were coming to visit me and saying things, and I was just like, it's like the lights were on, but I was certainly wasn't there. And I think that kind of went on for 
like two years really yeah I don't know yeah I mean well done for coming through it, it just I can't think of m many worse things that could happen for your 18 year old brother to do that yeah it's it's tough but it's common scarily common I think it was 800,000 people last year yeah, it's, it's crazy yeah and I'm not sure why it's that high well like we're kind of saying like it it does happen to men more than it does to to women the suicide rate's higher in men um i think it's not being able to or not feeling like you can talk about your problems and things like that or what's going on and also not knowing where to turn when something is going wrong you know you can like the mental health system you know everyone who i've had to deal with in the system has been has been great but it's overstretched and people don't know what services are available or who to turn to and things like that so there's just so much going on that it can't cope with can't cope with the people that that need it as well as you have people that are sat at home that would never even attempt to go out and, and they're the people you kind of need to get to most yeah i think it's three to one isn't it i think it's ratio three men to every one woman so it's, it's much higher um but I don't know what the next logical step would be because I think if you have a look at, like, I mean, we're having this conversation now. It's probably a conversation that most men wouldn't have had. I've had loads of these kind of conversations. So uh, maybe maybe it's this false reality that I've created because I speak about it. I think mm. I think it's more spoken about. Perhaps it isn't, but I feel like it's more. Certainly, awareness is is much higher now. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, much more charities out there. You've got Prince William like d devoting his time into it. So I feel like the awareness is there but it's not running alongside any positive data so mm. i'm like well what what's going on if more men are speaking mm. is that the solution or is that just step one yeah i think it's step i think it, there's a lot of disassociation because you know people are mental health oh that's not you know me whereas the thing is everybody every single person has mental health it's just what where you are on the scale whether it's bad or good and i think people presume that oh you know mental health that's not me that's people who are you know struggling or you know thought, thoughts of suicide or you know they're taking antidepressants whatever it is that's on that that's over there and i'm over here you know i'm, I'm good i'm golden whereas it's okay so you're good on the scale so how do we keep you there and you still need to be involved in these uh, awareness and this these this conversation so you can stay where you are so you don't slip into that bracket yeah and I get, again though if you ask like all, all the men in the world like to rate their mental health i'm not sure we'd even be in that tune with it like mm. what's good like it's good just normal but it's not good it's just normal to you therefore it's okay so like you say i think a, a lot of the especially old school kind of guys will be like yeah, well yeah. i don't want to kill myself so i'm fucking fine yeah do you know what I mean? And it's like, well, how, how do we start becoming more aware of how we feel? And then how do we separate it from just human experience? So one of the best things I've done is kind of accept, like you've already kind of touched on this, that life is going to be like that. Mm. It's certainly, it, you're not going to feel good every day. So it's, it's detaching, but there's also a bit of caution to put labels on everything, isn't there? Because if you have a down day, do we, do we want to declare ourselves depressed? No, of course. I think, you know, if, it's it, over long periods of time, you know, having down days and good days, uh, they come and go. But if it's for a significant period of time and it's starting to affect your, you know, your life and how you interact with people and do things, then that's certainly when you need to start, you know, doing something about it. How much reflection have you done uh, of your own mental health? Like how much time have you spent looking at your behaviours, how you act, how you feel, how you behave? how you treat people well, how much work have you done on uh yeah i've had to do loads to yeah, be fair just yeah. to off the back of off the back of that and learning about my own mental health and going to a place going to places where you know you're struggling with that um and i did some therapy what were you now 2022 so i think the start of 2021 yeah and i'd done bits and bobs before but it was sort of like grief counseling and things like that and i was like it's not really it's not this is not really working and you kind of have to go through a few sort of counsellors and find the one that you kind of want to work with. Um, and it was just a lot of personal work in terms of being critical and how the way I actually treat myself. Um, and from the back of that, you know, that's where I've had to put the work in in terms of 
you know, what kind of things I say to myself and how I treat myself. And that's where things have moved forward, really. Yeah, it's one of the hardest things to do, that is, man. Like, I think that's where it all starts, isn't it? It's like, how do you treat yourself? Before we, before we look at how you treat other people, it's like, what do you really think to yourself? What do you say to yourself? Because those little kind of voices that pop up into your head that tell you you're worthless or mm. like, there's no point doing this DRM project, there's no point doing the better man, it's, what's the point? Mm. Who, who do you think you are? why would people listen to you all that kind of stuff that's a hard thing to mm. one it's a hard thing to even recognise it and then secondly to try and change that pattern of behaviour because we don't really know where these voices come from man. Like they just pop into your head don't they yeah exactly I think it's you know everyone experiences like the little voice in your head that you know that's all cool. that's normal but it's what you know what does it say to you and how do you because without like to everybody else that's out there everyone's got their own thing going on in their head and that's something that no one ever sees and it's like well how is it affecting you like for me it was affecting me a lot in terms of my confidence and how I went out and did things it was like I call him the colonel it's the colonel was battering me all the time for everything I did he's like nothing nothing that you do is good enough and for me always trying to fight that feeling as well as with everything else that was going on with my brother you know you were just letting that kind of take over myself so instead of fighting it just being able to sit there and go okay I'm not even gonna you know but it's the fighting of you know I don't want to feel bad I want to be good when you know that's not really how it works you can have bad days and now when you know I'm in a bad mood or things get bad yeah obviously things still get on top of me for sure but it's okay you know it, you know it's just one of those and I'll just do a few either maybe do a bit of reflection or just stop what I'm doing and give myself a bit of time off or w whatever it is go for a run exercise things like that to kind of lessen that load on myself yeah it makes sense and the last few guys I've speak, spoken to have all they're in such a better place now mm. and it's through that practice of detaching so they no longer fight really hard when they feel like shit they just just let it because they know it's going to pass I think they're experienced enough now to oh this is normal I'm not going to fight it too hard because I spent years wanting to feel good every day wanting to feel like positive wanting to feel my most energetic wanting to be at my best not wanting these moods to come along mm. not and how much, how much energy does that take loads. from you it's a full time job it takes everything so like I would sleep and I would train I'd eat well but I was exhausted man and then I spoke to a guy called Jeff Thompson he was on the podcast last brilliant guy and he said Alex you're, you're, you're fighting you've got internal fucking war going on doesn't matter what you eat you're going to be exhausted you're fighting every minute and it was only until I realised that it, it really helped me just to just to know that you can't really change something can you until you're aware of it exactly and you know that's what this is all about the awareness is obviously it's out there as in you can listen to it but you, you don't necessarily re relate it to yourself and it's you know like the things we're doing for DRI me and Erin like, like things that yourself are doing it's getting people in the room, getting them together and talking about things and then people having conversations off the back of that and doing a bit of work that, you know, can spark that change. Definitely. I'd encourage any, anyone to really just sit down and do a bit of self-reflection. The thing with mental health is though, like, and again, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at your, your kind of view on this in a second, but if I have a look at all my worst times in my life, it has been self-inflicted. Whenever I've suffered poorly from mental health, it's through poor decisions and not treating myself properly. So I don't really have to be too inquisitive and go, why do I feel like this? Like I can, I can see it, there's patterns from poor behavior to mistreating people, to lying, to cheating, to doing things I'm ashamed of basically, and then not taking care of myself, probably because I feel ashamed, you know? Like why would you, why would you take care of someone that's doing the wrong thing? Mm. That's kind of how this pattern sometimes cycles around, isn't it? So like there's that shame in yourself. Like you ain't gonna treat that guy like the best. You're just, you're just not. So, you know, you knock down the beers and that, that makes you feel good for a bit. And then you just don't treat yourself like you're worthy of much more because of the way that you behave. That's been my case anyway. Mm. It's been a hard cycle to get out of because talking and saying you love yourself is one thing, but you do have to back that up with good, what I would call good behavior mm. or mor good moral behavior. I don't know what your views on that are. Um, I think, ev like, like you said, like it's, it's a journey that everyone's on and it's all about finding out what works for you for me personally like I'm quite self critical so like I've got a really you know I'm driven and I want to do things but on a good day that's great you know we can achieve this that and the other but on a bad day 
it jars you into the ground because you know <laughs> yeah. that little voice in the head is saying you know if it's not 10 then you need to go to 11 and it's like it's exhausting so it's just being able to try out different things whether it's exercise any kind of movement you know talking to people and then yeah, I, th I think mainly it's to do with connecting with people and being able to feel safe uh, in terms of like speaking about how you how you feel to be fair yeah I'm not sure what's going to encourage guys to do that though mm. like guys are stubborn as fuck I know because I'm one of them I'm not even sure I'd reach out if I was really struggling I'd want to process it and deal with it on myself and I think there's a good argument that we should learn how to process some of our own problems better mm. and almost what we called Stuart Williams a guy that I was speaking to called it like self-coaching so like the awareness thing like you stepping back I guess and kind of recognising what's happening mm. versus just thinking well I need to talk to someone because talking is good I'm never going to discourage talking but for me it is only it, it's the catalyst that can spark some form of change mm. but talking alone oh yeah I think that's why we do what we do because it's not just about there's so many different mediums that we use in terms of you know whether it's a blog whether it's events where people can come and you know you need to be able to everyone needs to have access to their own way because not everyone's gonna you know when we first started kind of getting into this and i'd see people sort of talking on tv about their mental health i was like i could never do that how how are they in a place to do that but it's all about like where you are with your mental health and i think now i'm in a place where i figured out a few things and i'm able to to speak on it in a way that you know like like I said i've had time to reflect on it so now i'm able to speak but for the people who are who wouldn't turn up to a talk or maybe they're not they're not watching tv it's like well how can we get to those people and it's by blogging and all these other things podcasts and things like that so everyone has access to the same information no matter where they are and, and kind of what they're doing and that's why I like the things that sort of we're doing is is workshops so physically getting people together like we're connecting now yep. together but someone who's struggling you know they're not going to be able to come out and it's literally like zero to a hundred it's, it's not going to happen so they might be able to listen to the podcast on Spotify at home and then they can have a little takeaway from that and that's where we're kind of getting to now with social media in its good sense is that people are able to listen to things from the comfort of their own home and hopefully we can because uh, they're the times we don't know what kind of change we're we're making because we might never see those people like ever but they've got access to this sort of positive content yeah i think that's a real great way of looking at it a real positive way i think if i'm if there's something i need to improve it's probably that well there's lots i need to improve but that's fucking one of them definitely because i often feel like sometimes just this as a l alone isn't enough but then again, I, I, I get reinforced messages saying, I listened to your podcast and it really helped me. So I think you're so right. I think sometimes if I can get like, because I've been doing this for like 20 years now, this mm. self-development game, I can forget how hard it is right at the start. Yeah. Because yeah. I was that lad you just described. Like I just started with a little book and, and that was enough for six months a year. And it took me years to start getting in, into like talks and workshops and stuff. But to remember that is it's it's this theory they say you know you learn you become you forget mm. so you learn something so much that it becomes part of you and then because it's part of you you don't have to reinforce it you forget it it's just normal yeah but then that it can create a disconnect between the people just starting out but there's people out there like i say that will i think teachers are only good to the person who's at the level that you want to teach at if that makes sense so I think somebody who's just starting out for, for me now, I'd, I think I'd struggle to relate. But for somebody who's probably been a bit more advanced or at least got the physical aspect involved, like I think I could probably help them then because they're further along their journey. But we need people leading from the front as in at the very start, the very essence. But I think they're the hardest guys to break down, the mm. guys that wouldn't even pick up a book. There's some mm. guys that won't even read a fucking book on this mm. stuff. Isn't that crazy? I know, yeah. Won't even look at it. I don't know what that resistance is, why it's so strong. And, you know, we're never going to be able to connect with everybody. No. And that's fine. You know, that's, like I said, it's a personal journey. And at some point it will twig. But something that, you know, you've said or me and Erin have said might connect with them 
they're like, oh yeah, someone I remember someone saying about something, and then mm. they'll go and do the. It might be not as late as it was going to be. It might be you know uh, a few years earlier. So, you like like I said, you don't know like where you're helping. No, you don't. You're right. Uh, yeah, it's hard to even like really understand how this podcast. You, you don't think about it going out. You, like, I'm just talking to you because mm. I, I want a conversation with you. I yeah, don't, yeah. I don't sit there and think. I wonder who's listening to this. I just think it's good to put out good stuff into the world and whoever mm. needs it, I think it will land in front of them. Yeah. Like but even if one person gets help from absolutely. it, then... Oh, amazing. It's a bonus, isn't it? But like, with the people that you're helping, you know, then they're going out into the world and being more of an active citizen and sure. with the conversations that they're giving to people. So it's like twofold. Yeah. You know, it goes out, and it's, it's like the tree. Yeah. So it goes out and it goes out and it gets bigger and bigger. And before yeah. you know it, you know, we can infect everyone with it. It just takes people out, out on the front line. Yeah, and I found the podcast is having more success now that like um, kind of let go of all outcomes of it. So I used to be really driven, like I wanted to be the best at what I did, and I still kind of do. But now my main ambition is just to have good conversations and put it out. And if it if it takes off, it takes off. But there's really no outcome attached to doing this. But like I do it for fun. Mm. I know it's a weird topic to talk about for fun, but I genuinely love talking to people about it. So my faith, my inner faith says just do it and put it out and it will land in front of the people that need to hear it if, if they choose to. Simple as that. And mm. that's nice because there's not much pressure on it then. You know, because mm. like, you know, you've know, you run your own company. It's hard because you want to be ambitious, don't you? You want to do well. You want to sell t-shirts, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if that if that takes over your mission, I want to sell t-shirts, it kind of loses sight of the yeah, real definitely. reason why you got into it. Yeah, definitely. Balancing those two things is hard. Yeah, of course. We're always trying to you know move forward and I think with everything that we're doing like these days going into schools like uh, Erin's a um, secondary school teacher and oh, she's cool. on, on that side and helping to push us into more schools because like we were talking about we kind of want to work in the front line and on prevention so if we can work with kids then that's that's where we want to be to be honest amazing mate I think that's I think that's a phenomenal thing to do because I think that's where a lot of the issues start now because mm, like yeah. if you if I go back to what I knew, which was nothing, <laughs> and this is, I was 20 at the time. Yeah. If someone had kind of, not that there wasn't people coming in school doing talks and stuff, but it's, they need to be relatable as well. So if there was someone that came into school that did a workshop on mental health and, you know, maybe not everyone again is going to um, relate and engage with it, but you might just pick up some, some word or something might twig with you and that will come back to you in a, f in a few years' time. And that's what it's all about, just having that little yeah. bit of basic knowledge there so that if something is happening that you're unsure about feelings that you're having then you can actually you know I remember doing a workshop on that and that's what this is and I've, I don't need to worry about it too much it, it, it should pass yeah I mean I d I'm a bit older than you and I'm 37 I can't remember one single guidance that we were given at school about mental health I don't even think it was really a topic oh. back I then I don't no, not, not at all I can't remember if it was, if I'm wrong, then I apologise to my school, but I, I, I don't ever remember having that conversation. It was maths, it was English, it was history, it was geography, it was But the good, the good thing is now is that they're open to it and they want to bring people in to talk about these things. I think they have to be now. I think it's too big of a thing not to be. It's just who do they bring in now and like how relatable is it and what advice, because everyone's got different opinions and views on this. So you could say, well, who, who are you and I? Like, we're not qualified. But I think we also, that could be playing our favour. Like, mm. Me and you are both normal guys, right? I think sometimes it's more powerful coming from guys that both got tattoos. Yeah, like, you know, I've got a skinhead. And I don't look like I'm the kind of guy that would talk about mm. my feelings. So I think when you do, it can be quite powerful. Whereas the guy sat behind the office in a suit and his diploma on the wall, it's just a bit cliche. I'm not, mm. I don't know, I don't know what you think, but I think it's good to oh, yeah, for normal guys. No, 100%. Working that's, guys. That's why I think, what, that's what, what makes Erin such a good t teacher as well because she's relatable. She's down to earth. She's younger than the older teachers and she yeah. can speak to them in a way that, you know, not everybody else can. And it's the same that she brings into the, the, the business as well. So, and that, that's what it's all about. That's why we're, you know, not just talking about mental health in that way. We're trying to not dumb it down. We're trying to talk on a level that everyone can understand and it's not like a clinical conversation it's like look you know we make clothes and the good that comes from it goes into to mental health that that's what we're all about and 
people who see the designs, you know, they enjoy them and they don't even know anything. That's like you could look at our T-shirts and you don't know they've got anything to do with mental health. And yep. that's what we want to be about. And then you go, oh, oh this company does this. They, you know, they use 25% of their profits to go into community work. And it's all about mental health. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I'll check out this. Then they read a blog. And it's like we have a lot of local people sharing their personal stories about their journey with mental health. And they can pick a few tips and tricks up from that. And then they might come to one of our events. And that's really the culmination of everything DRM. Because yep. it can be a little bit disjointed at times. But that's where you bring the clothes, the music, the talks, in all under one roof. Yeah. And people really get it at that point. Yeah, it's smart. I do the same through physical training. It's kind of like the entry in. Because, yeah, if I went front end, guys, come and talk about how you feel, like, goodbye business, Alex, you know, that ain't going to happen. But, yeah, come and train, we'll, you know, we'll lift some weights. Mm. Then we do our kind of, like, physical activities, our abseiling and stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to say, you, have your, you get your group together and you go out and do things yeah. like that that's when the real connections happen like you can connect online and through social media but like the reason why I want to do the podcast face to face mm. is because they're a better connection we'll flow much better we'll have 100%. a much better conversation so we went abseiling the other week and the guys are all quiet they don't say much they're together and we all you know have the nerves we all get through it and at the end they're all hugging and shaking hands I'm like this is what it's fucking about exactly yeah it's amazing exactly and that's how me and Aaron feel after the event is like you've got people um, so the first one that we did was in um, 2019 at the bank in rugby. Um, it's the first time that anything like that had happened, you know, happened in, in, in our town. Uh, and Erin had done a great job organising the event and getting the music in and whatnot. And just walking around, you know, that pub at that time after like a, someone talking and you could hear people having their own little conversations like between themselves about, oh yeah, you know, I've been going through this and that. And it, and it was like this is literally what it's about. And at the end of the night, you know, all the people that organised it, we came together and we're just hugging each other and just like, you know, we've, d you know, we've really like started something here. Yeah, it's class when that happens because, you know, it is hard work, but when you have those little moments of like, this is why I do it. Exactly, and that's, that's what drives you to keep moving forward and keep going. Yeah, and I'm sure you've been on the end of messages like this where you get people saying, you've changed my life, like you've really helped me. Like I was on, and it's hard to, hard to ever understand that like what we do can have that impact on people. I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I like to think I'm quite humble, but but sometimes if you're too humble, you don't realise the good of what you're doing. Mm. So if you're a little less humble, you probably do more of it. Shout about the rooftops because I've got this big problem with like I, I don't really want to be known on social media, mm. but I'm kind of like well I need people to know who I am and what I do, and there's that fight between both. Like, I'd love to live just a life off social media, a nice quiet life, like in you know village, two dogs and just that kind of thing because again I think that would be good for my own mental health to yeah, get off of course. social media I'm sure you probably have these same kind of battles right but I think you're quite good with your time like I have three days as well stuff like that just managing it really um, but but it's a tough old balance but it kind of like when you say you hear guys saying you know hugging at the end and stuff it does make it all worth the sacrifice of doing a few posts on social media and <laughs> stuff like that but that's what we're in it for isn't it yeah definitely I mean yeah, t together me and Erin take on all the responsibilities. She she likes making the stuff on social media and she's probably better than I am, t to be honest with you. Um, but even like coming together, designing all the teas and stuff like that, that's like the fun bit, being like creative and yeah. getting to just have a go at things. Yeah. And, you know, some obviously there are chores inv involved in that, like saying social media is not, it's just a bit of a, a slog. Yeah. But then from that comes the that's just like a it's what you have to do to keep everything else sure. going and keep the good stuff going so yeah it's worth it in the end to to get where you need to go of course and that's life like we said at the start you've got to accept you're not going to feel great every day there's not you can't you're not always going to have a day that's filled with just high priority tasks sometimes you have to do some things that aren't so enjoyable so that you get to live the life that that you want to live and stuff how long have you been with Erin? uh five years now so this freaks me out last week on this podcast, right? Because we were talking about non-attachment, all right? And I had Matty and Jeff separately, both very deep guys, very deep. And I understand the concept of non-attachment with material items. Like, you know, you can't live your life being happy for a car. And for, you can't attach to those mm. things because if they get taken away, you remove your happiness. But Matty and Jeff both talked about the non-attachment of people as well, of not putting too much onto people. And I was like, that is next level stuff, next level stuff. Um, and they were saying that they'd both like, 
love their partners to bits, but they can never depend on them for happiness. I was like, that's fucking hard to do. Oh yeah, I mean, it? like, how important has Aaron has Aaron been in your like last five years in your success and who you are as a man? I'm guessing quite a- quite absolutely big, absolutely major <laughs> major important. Yeah. I think uh, probably without I don't I'm not sure if I'd even be here today well, to be honest. That's crazy, right? To say that. So in essence, like, you feel like she saved you a bit, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So and, and I mean, it's amazing when a woman comes like that in your life, right? But like, how do you then not attach? Um, I think. It's, I've been able to do a bit of work on myself in terms of, like we're saying, criticalness and what's going on in my head. And from that, you won't want you in a bit of a better place. You don't necessarily need to put those things on other people. Because, sure. you know, when I've been ill, Erin's t- taken over and just looked after ev- everything. Because, you know, that's what you do when you care for people. Um, but coming out, out of that, is like you can see the work that she's put in there and it's like you know i've put someone through something and they're going to carry that around like forever and it's like okay well you know you need to be careful in terms of we don't want to have to go through that again necessarily because i know she would hands hands on heart go go through that again and look after me if i needed it but you know i don't want to have to if i can help it i don't want to have to go through that again and put that on a sort of thing makes total sense I'm guessing when you say you were ill you're talking about your, your mental health yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah yeah let's face it you feel pretty unlovable when you're at rock bottom don't you mm. but it's also an important process of like getting out of that stage is people will need to take the roles off you so in terms of so at the time I was at work you know I was trying to me and everyone were trying to run a business you got to do all the normal chores and stuff like that and all those stuff on top of you, if someone can obviously work, it's like, right, you're not going to be there. Then someone's like, right, I'm going to do the cooking, the chef in, take the room, like the, the boring tasks off you. Erin's like, right, I'm going to run DRM while you can't. And then I'm able to recover without worrying about, oh, I need to do this, I've got this to do, and things like that. So when it, it, we did that kind, of, that kind of work in therapy, is the roles getting t- taken off you, and you know you got to accept that and understand what why it's happening, why are pe- why people are actually going. Don't worry, I'll do this. Yeah, you know, it's all right, leave it. And okay, right, it's it's for the best. And then when you're well enough, then taking a few of the, those roles back, and then when you're ready to, you know, going back to sort of normal life as it were. Yeah, makes sense when you explain it like that. Did you have any issues with actually doing it though and handing over oh, like yeah. power, but like almost yeah. like that, you know, emasculation of like, well, I can't do it. You're going to have to do it. Did you, did you have, because that would hurt me a lot. 100%, because I was like, well, I just, because my thinking originally was, well, you just have to do it, get on with it. I should. There's a lot of should, shoulds involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, doing that work in therapy and just, okay, well, why? And getting rid of the shoulds and changing those for other, other things. But it's just it's like a again a journey and a process that you have to. When you see yourself doing it, it's the stop. Let me change that, and then m- moving forward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is, mate. It is. Therapy is a good thing. Therapy is a good thing for anyone, I think. One, it allows you. The first thing it allows you is to get shit off your chest. Yeah, that you may not have got. I don't think I'd, I know I wouldn't have got half the shit off my chest if it weren't for therapy. And I've got friends, but I'm not spending that on someone. Mm. But it's just that another person being able to, you know, they're a professional, they're able to work out things of, and treat you in a certain way that they feel you're showing signs of this, that, or the other. And they, but they're able to then tweak their th- therapy to kind of suit that. And then you're able to work out a few things. So like I said, for me, it was self criticism which no one on the outside is going to know they're not going to know what I say to myself but that's the kind of thing that exhausts me and then I can't go and do the other things and it's like not fighting it and learning to when it when that kind of voice comes along learning to just sort of accept it and like leave it and it still happens now of course don't get me wrong but it's more like I laugh now (laughs) yeah I'm thinking I can't believe that because you, you know, hear it right yeah, yeah and I can't believe it. that was kind of one of the root of all the bad stuff that was going on because that 
that then caused something else to happen, which caused something else to happen. And then now just being kinder to myself, yeah. I'm able to operate at the, the my high level, but just for longer. So let's break this down a little bit for anyone listening then. W- when you say you're kinder to yourself, what specifically is different now? Like, do you have any routines and rituals that you do daily or weekly mm. that help you practice the art of being nice to yourself? Um, so for instance, like take this week, I suppose. So, I mean, it's been hot, so that's taken energy out of us. Um, work at the start of the week was pretty tough and I was I was like, by the time I got to Wednesday, I was off. Like, I am absolutely knackered. Um, and I had to go on a run Wednesday and my knees were here and I was thinking, in, uh, the old me would have just gone, you've said you're gonna run, you have to do it, you should do it. But to be fair, it was Erin as well. She was like, you know, maybe you should give your day, uh, yourself a day off. And I'm thinking, yeah, I, you know, that's a, also a reminder to remind myself that I need to be kind to myself. And it's like, okay, right. Well, it's not the end of the world if you don't run tomorrow. You can run any other day of the week. You're tired. Remember, all these things adding up. It'd probably be better for you if you don't go on a run. So I didn't go on a run. I slept in an extra half an hour. Like, just small things like that yeah. for me is then I'm able to attack the next day, not as ex- exhausted, and hopefully then get back up. I mean, uh, what it was a p- the podcast with Paul McGee. The podium, yes. podium. Yeah, that was a great. Analogy. Yeah, for two for two weeks, I've I've because I hadn't heard of that before myself, yeah. and I've started using that. Yeah, because cool. I'm someone that sets a target, and if I don't reach it, then I'm I'll be miserable. So, when I went on a run this morning, I was like, okay, right, gold is eleven miles, silver ten miles, because I was still tired from from this week. So I was like, and I was feeling you know body's hurting a little bit there. I was like, can I? And I was like, no, you should go for it. And I was like, okay, right. But if I can't, then I'm going to be annoyed. So gold, 11 miles, silver, 10 miles, bronze, nine miles. I came in at 10.5 and I was, you know, I can go back my down and be happy with that. Like, so. I'm not surprised, mate, if that's your bronze level, for nine fucking miles. I was gold every day of the week for me, mate. That is, that's some mega distance. But we are training for a half marathon at the moment, so it's, you know. Yeah, yeah, I like it's that not that energy every. that you put in there. It's a difficult one, that. It's massive, that. I think that's really useful. It is, it is. What you've just said makes total sense to me. Total. But then there's another part of me that goes, hold on. Hold on. Like, you could talk yourself out of every run that you're not that into. Like, if you have a little niggle every time. So... How, how do you think we separate like the mental resilience side? You know, when, cause like yep. life will throw things at you, like your brother, for example, right? At that point you had no choice, but to dig in like with everything that you had and get through that horrible time, mm. right? I love training. And again, everyone has different values on training. Some people train for fun and, and, and all that. I love it for my mental toughness. Mm. So you know days like that where you're yep. saying, I don't want to go out, I love days like that. I love it when I'm saying, Alex, don't go gym. Because I go and I feel like I've won a victory. Mm. And again, I'm not saying it's the right yeah, way, yeah. by the way. No, I'm not I saying it's the health. I 100% is. agree with you. And yeah, I'm also the same. It's what's the reason for not doing what you're supposed to be doing? Just because you can't be bothered. That's not That's not yeah. what we're getting at. It's yeah. is the, the other, re- like another reason really is, okay, I'm not going to go on the run at this, you know, this was in the morning. I'm not going to go on the run in the morning. I'm going to sleep in. I can still run that day. I can still get it done. It's just in the evening. It's changing that focus of I have to do this at this time, at this moment, and this distance. Is I can still do it. It can be less of the time. It can be a different part of the day. And that I know I've still done what I said I was. But you do gonna, know that's a rare do. skill, don't you? What that you've got. To, it's, it takes. That's what I've been learning, though. Yeah, yeah. But to, to separate the BS in your head to the actual, like, actual what's going on, that's a real skill, man. Mm. Like, you're ahead of the game, especially at your but, age. But like, seriously, to have that, because it sounds like you're having dialogue with yourself. Yeah. Which is what's happening, right? That's the pain that you, have, that you have to go through to get there. Sure. Like, is that worth it? Or could you, if there was another way, I think I'd probably choose another way. Yeah. To go about that. Yeah. But that even that is a skill that like if somebody listening to this can pick up that like just slow down and h- hear the conversation because we have a conversation like that all day long but it's just we're not in tune with it mm. you ve- you much very much are right you at you the moment I feel it. that way yes 
but that's how my mindset was it was so fixed yeah. it was like yeah. i have to do this i should do this right now and there's no other way of doing it and it's just like well and for someone to tell me like do you know that that was the the therapist telling me like do you know like this is how you're thinking and it was like a revelation to me i was like i can't believe like i've been treating myself like that for th for this long and you know i was crying i was upset because all the bad things that have been going on it was like i'd done that to myself sure you know and if i was just kinder to myself i could have caused myself so much less pain definitely i mean how would you feel if i said bill uh, i don't give a fuck your knees hurting you pussy i want you out running 11 miles i don't care if you're crying i don't care if you feel depressed you're out running no bullshit if I was horrible to you all mm. the time like that, you'd be like, who is this fucking guy? <laughs> Get the fuck away from me. I don't want to hang out with you. But, but that's how we are with ourselves yeah. times 10. Yeah, and that's what I am like. But, you know, I'm as driven as, as anybody and I will go out and do what I need to do. But it's just, there's a different way of going about it is not being like that m miserable while you're doing it. You still got to be enjoyable. Yeah. Because if, you know, I could have gone out and run 11 miles, but I still, I could have been miserable for the rest of the, of the day and I realised you know I come in here I've got to talk to you I was like I don't want to exhaust as well exhaust yourself yeah by setting your expectations so high it's like are, you know are my expectations for myself realistic is another thing so the tasks that I'm setting myself ca is that actually achievable so that's when I guess the podium goals are good they, they come in good because the the high goal that you set yourself it may not be realistic so at least you'll hit one of the ones below that yeah, mm -hmm. realistic's one of those strange words, isn't it? It's like, for, for ambitious guys like us, probably stay away from it a little bit. I, f I always find the only way you know whether something is, to re is realistic is to go out and, and taste different things and know what you're capable of and go and push. What do you think to David Goggins? Me and Erin love him. Yeah, cause he, so he wouldn't let you off with that bullshit, no, right? No, he got us through the marathon training. Yeah, he's a legend, isn't he? Yeah. But he's also a psychopath. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and he d definitely doesn't look happy. But again, Jeff Thompson's always someone that says to me, Alex, don't search for happiness, search for growth. Because, you know, that will give you more fulfillment than happiness. The problem with happiness is it's fleeting. It's, mm. it's up and down. Like things happen, like that's happened to you. If your goal is happiness at that point, your goal's destroyed. But you can find meaning, right? You find purpose of what you have from that horrible incident that happened. Mm. You've got purpose now in what you do. Real purpose. But Gogg yeah, Goggins is the man. I love him. <laughs> You read yeah. his book, right? Yeah, definitely. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, he totally got us through. I mean, uh, well, we, in your ears, yeah, well, yeah, while we were <laughs> marathon training, yeah. you know, Erin um, went out and ran hers. She actually didn't manage to complete the full train, her full training program that she had organised for herself. Yeah. yeah. And I was at work, you know, it was about two weeks out till the marathon. And then Erin, she was struggling with a knee injury that she had, you know, like she couldn't actually run. Yeah. Um, so she'd gone out for a run to test out her knee. I think she's supposed to be running like, uh, 12 miles or something like that um, and I'm at work I get a call and she's like I think I was loading in a, a lorry at the time she calls me and I'm, out, I'm outside she's like I've just run 14 miles I was like what do you mean I think you're only supposed to be running 12 yeah but my knees are and if I, if, I, if I stop now I won't be able to do the marathon so I'm just doing it now I was like what do you mean you're doing it now so I'm going to run the whole 26 right now and I was like wow. fair enough okay go for it and then I put Shit. the phone down and I was just like, I just need to encourage her as much as I can. And she was out, it was a training run, so she didn't take any, it was just a normal run route around our local town. Yeah. No water, no food, anything like that. And she was just like powering through. Shit. And I was just like, right, I texted her just saying, Goggins, exclamation marks, because <laughs> we had the, the, the watch yeah. so you could read your, yeah. your messages. Yeah. And yeah, she did the same for me when I was, when I did mine. That was a badass, mate. Serious. And she did it, did she do it? Yeah, smashed it. I mean, she was still annoyed that she did it in like 20 minutes slower than she wanted to. But I was yeah. like, you didn't complete the training yeah. program and you just you just got up and ran like a marathon just like that. I was like, how many people can actually do that? I think there's a time, there's a time and a place for Goggins. Like there's little areas 100%. in your life where you need that, that crazy 100%. psychopath voice in your head. When you're in a good place yeah, and you can take yeah. that and it can drive you forward. But for me... I was usually in a bad place. Yeah, sure. And it was just someone beating you. It was like being like bullied by yeah, myself. Yeah. Just br breaking you down. Who was a good 
person to turn to when you weren't feeling at your best so if there's goggins there to push you when you've got these bigger challenges when you know if you're bullshitting yourself goggins is there telling you you're a bitch and you just need to do it and there's a time and a place for that right Who who's a good person for you to listen to or tune into when you need something a bit softer uh so erin and basically my friends not in terms of necessarily fully talking to them about what was going on just spending a bit of time with them and just taking your mind off things for a while and if, if it was just having a little conversation about how you were feeling because you know a lot of my friends have been down that same road we've all been at breaking point at some point and we've all had to help each other out and learn like you know oh, right we need we all we need to act now so and so this is what's going on so you know as a group we, we've kind of come together and, and learned a lot about each other and ourselves and trying to help each other out that's cool do people come to you now like friends because of what you've experienced yeah i think i get a few messages on social media just like oh, i've seen what you're doing with what you and erin are doing with drm like you know i've been going through this right and yeah just i yeah i like i enjoy like yourself like helping people yeah. so i happily try and point them in the right direction or yeah. you know send them a few blogs or whatever it is yeah have you ever had a mate just come to you though and like totally open up and say this is how i feel i don't think so no nor me even doing what i do i think there's a fear that um i'm gonna hand out advice mm. i mean not people that i'd know people that i don't know have done that yeah it's easier yeah exactly yeah well who's a therapist fucking stranger yeah my therapist knows everything about me do you know what i mean i'm like fine i'd probably rather him though than my best mate but i think my partner we're trying to change like that's we're trying to move and like change that are we definitely well i am anyway yeah 100 percent. are you okay with like erin knowing everything about you about everything because everything means not just the best of bill yep i'm talking the fucking worst of bill you know that well, dark, she's, oh, sorry. exactly she's been there at those yeah. times and she's yeah. seen that so you know I've, I've had to put her through that and I think that's why, you know, where we are now, it's important to speak out and talk about these things so other people see that, you know, it's not them just going through that on their own, like, oh, so-and-so's gone through that. So, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Because for me, there wasn't... what when I, I felt like I was just com completely alone. Yeah. And now where we are now in 2022, it feels like there's so, much, so many stories coming out and this, that, and the other, and there's a lot more... Um, people pushing that narrative of you know i've been through struggles and like you can see it with celebrities and stuff like that which is which is not necessarily i'm not bothered who who's been through it but it just shows you that no matter where you are no matter who you are no matter what you've been through you know mental health doesn't discriminate and it can get anyone at any point yeah it doesn't care how much money you've got in the bank that's for sure i mean was it caroline flack yeah was it a couple of years ago yeah like, and then there's been uh, Keith Flint at the Prodigy. There's been there's been numerous celebrities that have committed suicide from Chester Bennington. Is it Bennington? Yeah, from Linkin Park, mm -hmm. Chris Cornell, loads that from the outside we would perceive as heroes, successful, all the money in the world. In fact, there's there's evidence there out there that says the more sometimes the more you have, the more money you have, the unhappy you become come become because you have these expectations that your life will change for the better mm. when you get all this i'm sure you, you know you've probably experienced some of this i know i have at my age like you collect things that you've wanted from a kid like a house and a car and then it's nice but it's not the answer it's not the thing that you think it's not the, like the vision board i did when i was 15 had all these items that i've got now nice yeah right you know the cheesy vision board if i did it now it would all be more experiences. There probably wouldn't be much stuff on there. Mm. It'd be what do I want to do? Who do I want to see? But that means you're on an advanced stage of that because not everyone, younger, older, they're still on that path of, I need to buy this next thing to feel like this. Sure. So that means you're at an advanced stage of, at least you know that it's about experiences and things like that. Yeah, I and mean, how you do it is exactly. through your strategy of reflection and listening. Because if you buy a car and it don't make you happy, what, why on earth do you think a faster car is going to fucking do it for you? Like what the fuck is going through your head? You have to slow down and you have to have difficult conversations with yourself. Scary ones. But not many people are willing to go there. Yeah, like that's the reality. It's, it's a scary thought having to you know, put a bit of graft in on yourself. 
Do you think no. it is the graph that puts people off, or do you think it's the fear of what they might find out about themselves? I think a bit of both, to be fair. We just, we, you know, we're carried away with, oh, I just need to, if it's going to take that long, because COVID was, you know, a helpful element in that, the fact that we were all kind of stuck at home, you had to do a lot of reflection, it was pushed on us. Um, but moving forward, you know, not everyone's able to carry that on. COVID was a, an indicator to where mm. a lot of people were at, I think, with yeah. their mental health. I think it, uh, it exposed a lot of us to where we were really at. Mm. I think some people crumbled under that and some people uh, thrived almost. Mm. You know, I loved it because it forced me to slow down. I had to slow down. I had to shut my gym. I was cool with it. I was like, great. Walk around the village, play with my dog for a bit. Mm. It was nice. Yeah, I enjoyed. Nice. I enjoyed the first part of it. Yeah, the fir- the third one was a bit shit. <laughs> yeah. Especially I after a while, I like, I like yeah, it. Yeah, it was around Christmas time, I think, mm. wasn't it? Uh, but yeah, it did. It did kind of show show us where we're at. But I think there is a fear for a lot of guys of like, what am I going to find out about myself? Or I know there's things that I don't like about myself. But again, I think if you can go back to accepting that that's normal, I think we all have it in us. You know, mm. I think we can all be pretty horrible people. And I think we can all be beautiful people as well. It depends which one you want to feed. But I think you need to look at all of it. Mm. You need to be aware it's there. Yeah, you I can't hide it. You can't push it away. I don't think you want to op- want to open a massive can of worms. Like the bit of work that I did was like one chapter of a massive book. Yeah, it's like I still, you know, although things are going all right now, you know, up and down days. Yeah, I'm able to. I've got t- more tools in the arsenal to be able to cope with things. But that's not the end of it. You know, I still need to go back and work on all these other, other things. Of course. But yeah. it's yeah. What are you going to find out? Like I had to find out some things that you know like I said, shocked me, you know, upset me. And then it's working on those things. And then, right, okay, like I said to the therapist, it was coming to the end of the, you know, we weren't really moving anywhere. And he's like, you know, I think this sort of piece of work's done. And that's how you've got to look at it. And yeah. I'm not saying you have to go to therapy to to do that. I mean, you can do it w- with yourself, but you've got to be a certain type of person who's, you know, whether you're reading a self-development book and then you follow the tasks in the book and next one, you know, you can do it on your own by yourself but you know you don't have to go to to therapy but that was just where I was and not that that's what I needed at the time I think like anything I think it's always hard on your own uh, and who's reading the self-development book that's what I'm interested mm. in someone that wants to grow and move maybe or somebody that's stuck in their way so won't actually absorb the information that's the danger so if I'm in my own head and you say Alex here's this book I think it will really help you and I've got that critical voice already. Before I've even opened the page, I might think, this is a fucking waste of time. Who the fuck's this guy, this author? I could already talk myself out of it. But I think a therapist can challenge you a bit harder because they can call you out a little bit if you've got a good therapist as mm. well. Because you'll just nod and agree at yourself and think you're right all the time. A therapist can go, oh, hold on, but have you thought about this? And like you say, revelations. I love being challenged. I love it when someone says, hold on, have you thought about it this way? Oh, no, I haven't, because I'm mm. in my own head. Mm. I need people to expand my, my vision. And once it's expanded, it's great. It's like it's there. I can see it more clearly. Mm. But to get to the place where we've gotten, I think you need somebody to help you with that oh, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, we're not going to re- reach everybody. No. You know, some people are closed off. But if they can take a few things, then that might just start opening that door. And, you know, like, no, I don't think anyone's ever too far gone to be able to start working on themselves or, you know, work on past traumas or whatever it's just you need to have that i was talking to my mum yesterday went out for dinner and we were talking about you know her childhood and things like that and she was like oh, i'm only just realizing stuff now and she's like in her 50s yeah so you know oh sure i'm sure you feel the same right i, I know i'm going to be 70 if I, I make it that far and still learning i know that every day is a school day every day is a school day yeah we call it in in the group that i'm in the white white belt mentality we're like we're always going to be beginners like, we don't know much the only thing we can really work on is ourselves, really. And this is where the non-attachment comes in, like other people. Behave, you, know, you can't control Erin, right? You can't control what she does, what she thinks. The only thing you can do, really, is work on yourself. And my reaction. And your reactions. It. Which is quite, like I said, it's quite refreshing when you know that. It makes things a bit easier. Because guys like to control everything. So the amount of relationships I've been in when I was younger, I was trying to control me and her. Because I didn't want us to behave like this. Do you know what I mean? So mm. you end up like, oh fuck, it's hard enough working on me. Now I've got got to worry about what she's what she's doing. 
It's so painful, man. Mm. It takes all the pleasure out of a relationship. Yeah, and that's all the things that are wrapped up that kind of you need to get work on and get off your chest so you can be a better person, so you can be in a relationship and, you know, give more to it instead of t- taking away and distracting from it. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be okay with who you are. I, s- I can't think of any other way that a relationship or a good life will work. You have to be okay with it. And the, the way that Jeff did it was to get out all of the things that he'd done wrong. Like he wrote them all down and put them into a book. And he said he felt cleansed because he had no more secrets, Mm. no more skeletons in the closet. Because that's also tiring when you're carrying around loads of dirty secrets about yourself. You know when everyone thinks you're a great guy and you're like, well, if you fucking knew this, you might change your mind. It's good just to get that out. That's another reason why I do the podcast. They're good cleansing for me. Mm. I don't have to pretend to be perfect. I don't have to pretend that my mental health is superb. I can just be honest and Mm. open, speak with guys like you who are exactly the fucking same. Mm. And it feels good, man, to not pretend. Yeah, that's why, you know, I'm at a place now where I want to talk about these things because people, you know, they may think, oh, you know, he lost his brother, but he started a clothing brand. It was like, well, there is a, like a middle bit. <laughs> yeah, probably, and yeah. that story kind of needs to be exp- explained as well. Like, yeah. you know, things may be going, you know, decent or right now, but there was that dark patch and it, it it's up and down. Yeah. So by being open, like I was ha- having a conversation with someone the other day they were like oh I went down a dark path and you know you did this I was like yeah but there's plenty of you just didn't see my dark patch yeah everyone else maybe maybe a few people saw yours but don't worry it was there it's a great point and it's why I'm fascinated and fixated on the struggle aspect that's kind of why I jumped straight in at the deep end you today I'm like no one really wants to hear about all your success no one wants to hear about mine either what people want to really hear about is the struggle and overcoming mm. obstacles because that's what's like inspiration you've got on there. Yeah, mate, it's wicked. It's a really good T-shirt, by the way. Thanks. I love it. I'm surprised you picked. Is it this yellow, right? Yeah, this like the DRM yellow. It's like our Beautiful, signature. Man. Yeah, it's really good. It's nice and tight as well. Good. Quite like it. Um, yeah, people want to hear the struggles. Like that's why I wanted to speak to you today because I knew I knew it weren't all rosy for you. Mm. I knew that you don't, you don't set up a company like DRM if it's just you've just had a beautiful straight life. So my instant thing is like, ah, oh, this guy's done something good out of something fucking disastrous. Hmm. And I, I really respect people like that. I think it's the only way you overcome things to take something that's that's been traumatic and spin it into something that you're helping people with now. So oh yeah, definitely. It's really I'm admirable. It's what you do is inspiring. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's cool, mate. And that's what I mean. I think there's a message in there, isn't there, for people that you can do something good Mm. or positive with the shit that's happened to you. Oh, yeah. That's like, you know, part of our like aims as well is just to show people that no matter what you've been through, where you've come from, you can still do kind of whatever you want to do in terms of like we're pushing creativity. So whatever that may be, art, things like that, you know, photography, that's our kind of we want to get people out there and into the world and do creative stuff that can that mm. goes along with our brand sort of thing I want to do everything <laughs> I want to do photography I want to do art I love clothing music I love music man music's the best thing ever I want to do it all I want to do it all ambitious guy it, it, it is and it's just um, curiosity mm. like you say the word creativity covers so many bases doesn't it I love writing I love reading I love podcasting the thing is that I think if you want to get really good at one thing you have to shut some doors yeah and but then you don't want to stunt your own curiosity. Yeah, and I think it's also, there's nothing, you should actually do something that you're really bad at as well. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like have a hobby that you're just rubbish at and just kind of chip away at that and then just enjoy works. being bad at things. Yeah. And just kind of work away at it. Not to get good at it, just because it's challenging yourself because it's it's an uncomfortable situation when you're terrible at something, isn't it? Let's be honest. It is. And it's also and it's, a good for, it's, it's good for you as well. Yeah. And it can, depending on like where you are, it can help you. You can lose yourself in, you know, trying to perfect something. Sure. And you can come out of that and go, oh, hold on a minute, I've lost, I've just lost an hour, two hours, you know, painting or whatever it was. And it's not a masterpiece, but you feel like you've just expressed yourself and you've you've given something to that. And it's like, well, how, well you know, where did that come from? Yeah, but also that terrible phase that you're talking about is part of the good journey as well. So if I think of what, you know, I'm world class now or what I call world class in the gym because I've done it for 18 years, four to six times a week for that entire period. So, but at one point I was terrible, honestly awful. I didn't know what the fuck to do, how to use the weights, 
I was 11 stone, never trained in my life, uh, and I was terrible. So if you think about anything you're good at now, at one time you were terrible. Exactly. So you have to remember that when you start something, because being shit at something is not fun, <laughs> is it? No, not at all. But I'm writing at the minute, and I've been told I'm a terrible writer, and I know that. But how do you get good? You keep, keep being doing a it. terrible writer until you're, a, you know, you're average. Just, just not even that poor. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty crap still. But, but then if it's, it's something okay. you enjoy doing as well, then... Yeah. Well, that's the thing. But I think you'll enjoy it a lot more when you're better, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, because if I was still terrible at lifting weights, 18 years later, would I still be doing it? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Whereas if... Right, uh, for me, it's more like, can you be better than you were? Though this isn't about being the best writer. Yeah. It's not about writing the best book. It's As long as I know I'm getting better at something, me, I, I think it's worth hanging in there. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because that's a nice feeling getting good at something. I think that's something we all need—a a skill, or a trade, or something to get good at, something to put our time and effort into. So if you don't have that, what do you do with your time and effort? Who knows? Netflix. Yeah, easy thing to do, right? I think yeah, ours is hundred. Mine and Aaron's hundred percent is DRM. Yes. Yeah. Right now, I've I've not got a background in fashion, or running a business but they're just like passions of mine mm -hmm. and Erin. So we just put our energy into it and that's all you need really. I think you can so. learn it. You can learn anything from, you know, asking people that actually have qualifications and know about things and just by w watching YouTube yeah. usually. But part of the fun is finding out and as well. It, yeah, like you said, being curious and yeah. just having a go. And how, going. how long has DRM existed now? Um, so we started in 2017 just yeah. as a blog so five years yeah yeah and See, then, right there you go S just as a blog mm. because it, the the goal always was you can't say we couldn't say oh we're a clothing brand that sports mental health without any content in the yeah. background yeah of course so we spent 2017 just putting out blogs and building that content base and then we in 2019 that's when we had our event and that's when yeah. we kind of yeah officially came out yeah, that's what I mean. If you trace it all the way back, like you were probably not very good at any of that stuff. No, the first designs <laughs> yeah. and the first logo was terrible. Yeah, of course. But I jump on your Insta now and I just see it where it is now. And, and I think this is the problem. Like you say, there's a big gap in everything, isn't there? Uh, and I think maybe it's part of our job to show the gap, but people don't like the gap as much as they do the outcome. So people would just see the DR, oh, I want to do a clothing brand. And they, they'll want to get to your level today. Same as the physical world. Like everyone wants to get in shape today. Exactly but it's it, long term it and, is and we you know it's one thing we always said when we set it up it was like we want to learn so it doesn't matter if it takes a little bit longer it's about us going on a journey as well and learning skills that you know we can keep for life yeah where do you think you'd be without this um passion you know if you didn't have drm like do, is that one of the reasons wh how you pulled yourself out of yeah yeah, yeah. for sure like at the start it was there was so much negative energy I was like we just need to turn that it wasn't just like a but it's like oh, I need to put this into something positive yeah and a few years prior a few like a few of my friends had got together and we, we were talking about starting a clothing brand anyway and it was just like well what's it gonna be what's it gonna do and then you know that was kind of on the back burner but still always always been in my head um, and then with what happened with my brother it was just well you know you got clothing there's no there was you know, not really many people doing that at the time um, and it was just like well let's use it to raise awareness you know that triangle can mean something to so many people what does the triangle mean uh, so it's a variation on the symbol for transcendence which means to go beyond yeah so you know representing Ollie representing anyone who's lost anybody that's, that's, that's what's in there do you does like Ollie show himself in different ways like since since he took his own life like does he does he inspire you in certain ways does he have a heavy influence on the design like is he is he part of the drm yeah he's part, part of the fabric in terms of you know yeah ev everything that we do is about leaving a, le a legacy for like him mm. so but yeah the designs are just we just try and subtly base them around mental health we don't want to emblaze yeah what well, i don't know whatever on it it's okay not to be okay or whatever you know I don't know maybe in the future we might do something like that but it we don't want it to scream mental health because yeah. we want it to be for everyone and be accessible for everyone yeah and then it, you get that oh actually this is a cool saying like the top that you're wearing is overcoming obstacles 
yeah, which cool. since we brought that out has so many people say you know with covid and everything it was like literally before we brought that up before covid and it was overcoming obstacles to get through covid and it was like this t-shirt is made for it's going to be around forever just because it it symbolizes so different things for different people no, I'm wearing it, dude. I'm not sure anyone's going to buy it now. I see, <laughs> see me wearing it. I'm not sure I'm Mr. Fashion, but... I'm sure they will. Yeah. Be a good advert. So for anyone in a situation that's like really struggling, like where Ollie was at, where do you think the best place for them to turn is? So if they're not going to reach out, like, can you think of any possible solution for someone who was struggling as much? Because to take your own life, you must be in so much pain, right? Mm. Like... What do you think the solution is there if if it's not going to be to talk? I think it'd be on the book at that point, do you? Mm. Uh, it, it's about expression. So if you're not, it's expressing yourself in different ways. Talking is just a, it's just one of those arms. So whether it's taking up exercise, because that's one of the tools that I use to get things off my chest, is to run it out yeah. or whatever, swim it out, whatever it may be, cycle it out just any kind of movement going to walk if it's writing it's kind of got to be something that you can get out writing um like some sort of hobby that is like expression whether it's going out like in the early days it was photography going out and people used to take the mic call me call me mr car park because i used to go into car park and i was t testing out my camera yeah. and taking strange angles and things like that and just at weird times in the morning because i was up thinking about you know all the things that were going on in my head so Anything like that, painting, poetry, like yeah. music, something where you can, it's like, like you said, a cleanse. And you can do those, you can talk about your feelings, like you can paint something that is how you're feeling without having to talk about it. And that can be your expression, that can be you getting what you need to out. And then you don't have to talk to people if you don't want to, or if you're yeah. not that type of person, but it's just, it's, it's, it's one of the helpful tools and obviously if you're going to get professional help talking is probably one of the one of the things that you're going to have to do I think that's what creation is really isn't it it's, it's, it comes from the internal body right like you can show what you're feeling outside yeah. by doing Without something external yeah having so. to actually go I'm depressed you can draw uh, you yeah. can paint a picture of a drooping flower yeah. and that can be you can have that, that can be that section there it's done it's out there now I can carry on yeah. like that's all some necessary some people yeah. need it makes total sense so I listen to music I do my writing I do my podcasting it's all really just the form of yeah, what's, what's going on inside so I love I love my music man it's my number one path I think the lyrics Johnny Cash yeah, sort of an old school rock yeah 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 I haven't come out of the 90s era yet <laughs> seriously I haven't so if I'm training it's Slipknot and Corn and all nice. that well Terrible. yeah but that's a good you can get a good pump on doing I that. think so and then if I'm at home chilled out it's Ben Howard nice. yeah stuff yeah, like that ben. ben Howard's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all the pressure what's the one yeah what he's got one of, that's a proper Terry tune oh, he's got coming out of the water that one I think I can't remember. yeah proper yeah I love all that kind of stuff but it has to the lyrics have to have be deep and meaningful for me to enjoy it properly yeah. I can't do pop cheesy pop <laughs> don't like any happy music I know all sad yeah, yeah, but it's not sad when I mm. listen to it. It's crazy. Because it's because it helps you, you relate to it. Yeah, and you it's get it's more than just li listening to music. It's a it's a feeling you get. Like yeah. they're speaking to me as a person. Well, if you listen, I mean, you must like Queen, right? Everyone likes Queen, yeah. You're a bit too fucking young for this conversation. Nah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, I like Queen. Yeah, awesome, right? But if you listen to the lyrics, yeah. like some of their songs, "Who Wants to Live Forever," and you know, listen to Bo Rap, it's like it's pretty dark mm. lyrics. And it's amazing to know that somebody like Freddie Mercury was feeling exactly the same, but he used it, didn't he, to be one of the best singers of all time. So mm. like that, for me, is the inspiration. Some guy feels like shit, and he's using that, using that energy to create this beautiful thing that 100,000 people at Wembley are singing, singing along to having a great time. Mm. They're having a great time to him singing about his pain. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. No, but no, you're right, though. It's about what coping mechanisms are we using currently and how can we turn them into more positive coping mechanisms? Like basically, the most usual one is probably going out for a pint. Is I'm sad, so I'm going to go and drink one beer and it turns into ten. Yeah. And then the next day you feel you you feel hungover, you feel rubbish, so you go back back there. It's you know without to limit the amount of beer I personally drink because sure. it kind of pushes you into that. 
It does. It does. However, I'm going to big up some beer talk here. <laughs> There's a time where I've been out with a few of my mates, and after two or three pints, they do start to open 100%, up a little bit. One hundred percent. I'm not saying it's the way to do it. Yeah. But you know, I think sometimes if I sat my mate down in a professional setting and said, "Mate, I, I, I want to talk to you today about how you're feeling." I don't think it would go anywhere. Mm. But mate, let's go out for a beer, man. Yeah. But let's talk, let's talk about footy first. Mm. Let's have a beer. Let's get another one. And then, then it, you start to soften yeah. it in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? By point three. Yeah. You and that's why we do our events in pubs because yeah. it's a comfortable Great environment. Idea. A comfortable environment for, for everybody. Yeah. You know, you sat down, you're having a pint in somewhere where you feel comfortable already because you, yeah. you, you, you've been there every Saturday yeah. night. Yeah. And then it's just, you're changing the tone of the conversation a little bit. Because yeah. you, you, you know yourself, when you're at the pub, you can put the world to rights. You can talk about every subject under the sun. In fact, so you're right. It's probably an area where most guys would actually talk in a pub. It's probably the only time guys meet up and talk. Like women might do it in a coffee shop with carrot cake. Guys do it with uh, like pork scratchings and a pint, right? It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Because me and you both know that booze isn't probably the best thing for your mental health. However, I think you've got to meet pe people where they're at. Yeah. And but like you're saying, it's not for people that are like... Super you know, advanced in. in if 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 you're really down and it's, that's not necessarily going to help you, yeah. you may you may need to go straight for the professional help. Sure. Or we need to catch that earlier. But yeah. if it's you know you've had a t tough week and you go to the pub on a Friday and you're just like that kind of thing, and even a, a, on a deeper level, like I was struggling this week with whatever task it is, and you can have that conversation in the pub, then that's like that. You can go into next week feeling oh, well. I've, I've I've spoke to my friends. You know we spoke about what things were going wrong on, yeah. and, and on on that kind of level, then that's where you want to be. It's not about, you know, I'm feeling suicidal. Sure. We don't want to necessarily have that conversation in the pub. No. But that, that's kind of w where things go. 100%. And if you think about success, it's like loads of mini steps forward, right? And I think sometimes a downward spiral is exactly the same. So like if you have to catch someone mm. at that point in the pub, because, yeah. you know, I, I've got friends and I've been here, so I'm, I'm certainly not claiming I'm, I'm, I'm any better, but... You know, you have some people that have the same complaints every week. Like their life was shit last week, it's still shit this week, but nothing's changed. Like that's where it can lead though. It can be a slow eroding process mm. towards a deeply unhappy life. And that's where I think we can like prevent some of the premature suicides and stuff by getting to the problem a bit earlier. Because we are, like I said, and I think that's why men are so bad at it because they won't reach out. Mm. So if they don't reach out, what do they do? They just fight it and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. Yeah, and on that spiral downwards, I think you behave in a different way. You behave in a way that you're really not proud of and it compounds mm. over time. Do you know what I mean? So you do. But if it takes your mates to ask you, you know, if you need to ask one of your friends, look, are you going to kill yourself? Or are you having thoughts about that? Then you've got to be direct if that's what you seriously think is going on. Because you know that's like urgent they need to get urgent help yeah see i've got friends that like they're not suicidal but like part of me wants to ask them like do you think about killing yourself because there's just an intuition or a gut that says i wouldn't be totally shocked mm. if he did something silly or something like i can see the pain in them and the unhappiness but they're not that unhappy you know they're you ask them. But there's, there's a weird feeling around that, isn't there? I don't know if you get it. There's a vibe of like, something ain't right with this person. They're, mm. they're unhappy. And that they're, they're surviving right now. But I just know there's something there. It's hard with a friend like that. Because you know they're not going to kill themselves. But you know they're not happy. But like, five years later, are they? which one have they edged closer to? Mm. Living a fulfilling life or living a life that they don't want to be in? That's how I see it. So it's, it's not being over dramatic. It's like every day that goes past when you're living an unfulfilling life, you've got to be careful. Because where yeah, does it be? You could spiral down into that. And that's when it it's be? about, you know, trying to help your friends in terms of, okay, this person is struggling and maybe right now they've not got the capacity to get out of that. So what can, you know, your friendship group do together to, to try and help, help them? And, you know, obviously you do need to help yourself as well. But when you're in that, in that mode, it's not it's not exactly easy to go. Yeah, I'm just gonna you know snap out of it because you're having that internal battle, and that's when it's important to have good people around you that can either notice when things are off or just be be blunt and ask you you know questions like not just oh, are you alright, mate? Like no, are you actually okay? Because you look like you're not. So what's what's been going on lately? 
and sometimes you need to try and open that door you know be the get get the therapist in you out and go something's not right here i need to try and interject and you know not everyone's necessarily comfortable with that but if you see something that's worries you or you know alarms you then these are things that we have to do or at least point them in the right direction or at least tell someone that you're worried about that person do you remember when you were at your lowest yeah so do i i don't think there's anything anyone could have said to me at that point no one no i agree but there was like little things that people had said on the run-up that come back to you at that point so yep. like, like like we we're talking about earlier is yeah although no one can stop you and save you and do whatever there's things that people have said come back to you in those moments and they might be the the, the difference yeah, and, and just presence is another savior like sometimes it's not about what someone says it's that someone's there mm. so did you ever turn to like any kind of form of faith when you're at your lowest like in terms of religion or spirit um not really to be honest it was just you know i i you know after i lost my brother i was you know i did pray mm. i was like if there is a god just please bring him back for me i wonder why that happens man like you get non-religious people mm. who have something like that happen or they're at a point where they don't know where to turn they turn to religion i oh, think I did it. it's I because your belief it. is everything that you believe in has gone yeah so if there's anything else out there that can help you right now then you're you're able to kind of relate to that and that that's something that can grab your attention because yeah, everything that you believed in before is shattered so you're now open to new beliefs and to believe in something different we had a guy come and do a, a training for the better man he was a believer of god it was an interesting conversation yeah people get very defensive over the, the topic of god and religion it's a weird one some people get really offended just at the conversation subject i, I find it fascinating when you look at the bigger picture of the world like the universe and how far it goes on and mm. it might be infinite it just blows my fucking mind like i can't process any of it it's insane Mm -hmm. they reckon there's up to a trillion earth-like planets out there that could have life on I'm like, it's, it's and we're on this tiny little one mate it's friggin insane like scarily insane like we are absolutely nothing we're so ins insignificant and that's why we've got to find purpose here and we have the daily we have but it, it's helped me not take things too serious as well so like the better man and DRM, yeah, it might be our passions and purpose, but we're also more than that. Like if DRM collapsed tomorrow and the better man collapsed tomorrow, I mean, you'd be okay. Because that's not who we are. It's not mm. our full identity. You know, there's more to us than that. As, as much as we are passionate about what we do, it's again, that thing of non-attachment. So Bill and DRM, you know, Bill's his own fucking man. It'll take me a while to get over that though. Sure, that you'd be happened. hurt. <sighs> yeah, yeah. But That'd be another grieving process we have to go through. But would you be all right? hope so yeah no you fucking know it you'd have to be wouldn't you exactly because you are not drm right you are not it's, it's no, your that's how yet. we've like me and Aaron has set it up so it lives beyond us exactly that right that's what we want it to do well, so that's it's perfect. not about if if we're not there then it can still yeah. move forward and run yeah same with you it's not got your name on it it can be any like the better man is every man and anybody mate i'll give everything i've got to make the better man work but i also don't want it to to um I don't want it to be the representation of whether I'm a failure or not. Because if the better man fails, it doesn't necessarily mean that Alex Mars is a total failure. Because I could be a great son, I could be a great um, hus husband, I could be a great dad. Doesn't mean that I'm a failure of business. And that's how I encourage all my guys. It also to depends on what the, the goal is. Because just because someone else says it's a failure, to you it might be success. Like our goal to start with just was just to, you know, our, my, like my specific goal was make some t-shirts for myself. Yeah. And if everything fails, then I've completed that. Yeah. And then it's, okay, sell to somebody that, you know, is not in the friendship group. Okay, yeah. now move out of rugby and all that sort of thing. So yeah. you just set a new goal and then carry yeah. on p pushing forward. Yeah. And many great things have come in my life off the back of disasters. Like where you think you fucked everything up and it's all gone sideways. Like new stuff grows. So like off the back of my fucking full on breakdown, I do what I do. Mm. so like I wouldn't really change it yeah see like you've put a, managed to put a 
positive spin on something. Or purposeful spin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Purposeful spin. Yeah, it, it means that I can't do anything else with my life apart from what's really important, which is, I believe, the internal work of how someone feels about themselves. I don't think outside of that, nothing's that important. But then that drives you as well because you're like, when bad things hit you again, you're like, well, I'm living true to myself. Yeah, and it's maybe a better person. So, um, Di here, the, the lady who oh, goes... I love Di. Right. I fucking love Di as well, right? She's an absolute legend. She, yeah. But my goal in life is to treat her exactly the same as I would treat a billionaire that I met. They're no different to me. Di's not a failure and a CEO, a billionaire CEO is a success. I don't view it like that. In fact, it could be the entire way flipped round. Di was the first person that made me feel at home here come over and spoke to me so already she's an instant hero in my eyes she's just lovely do you know what I mean so that success failure thing's really changed for me over the years I see that woman as a success a massive success because she's fucking kind mm. and she's happy yeah I mean what, uh, wouldn't you sw swap that for a billion pound if you're miserable as fuck I would because like you can cry in a big fucking 11 bedroom house you can be suicidal in a Lamborghini don't mean fuck yeah, all yeah it's not about those things it's about the smaller things in life yeah, and but I always say, don't get me wrong, if I was a billionaire, I'd probably have the house and the car too, but I don't think it would define my... Yeah, my I wouldn't turn it over if someone said, oh, <laughs> you can, here, here you go, I'm not going to be like, oh no, I don't want that because yeah. I like, you know, my, my, my house and my car, yeah. I'd still, you still upgrade it, but it's not yeah. the, because you have whatever, the, yeah. new jo the next job, because it's not about necessarily a billion pounds, it's moving from one job to another because it's more money. Yeah. It's, it's okay, stepping from a so moving careers because oh this one this one pays more money yeah but is it more enjoyable yeah. does it give you fulfillment yeah and that's like that with, with, with everything everything that we own yeah like you don't need to upgrade your tv no necessarily well, that, no and covid proved that because people were panicking expensive car leases so those things that we have can get ripped away from us at any point so to, to attach happiness to those things is a real dangerous game whereas like i say someone like die as an example like I reckon she'd be like that regardless of what she had. She's a beautiful person, right? Regardless, I love people like that. And I think, I think it's an even playing field then. So like I say, regardless of how much cash is in your bank account, whether you're a cleaner or a CEO, it doesn't fucking matter. It, that, that's what success and failure is, why it's changed for me. So I'd rather be a good man than a successful man. And a good man might mean 20 grand a year, not 100 grand a year. And I'm, I'm cool with that now. I weren't a while ago I wanted the 100 G's man the six mm. figure business was always a goal of mine I yeah. got it and I was like I feel no fucking different in fact I feel worse because I've got everything I wanted yeah I still feel like shit but then you got to go on that journey to get where you are now 1000% and this is what we're doing we're otherwise sharing, you still yeah. be chasing One, whatever it is 100% mate yeah uh, let's wrap this up with two traditional questions what's yep. next for DRM and Bill uh, so next for me personally is I got half marathon in a week's time so just a bit more running, a bit more training. Sure, we should have that beer then. <laughs> yeah, it's a Friday. It's hot. We, we, I, think, I, think, I think we need it, to be okay. honest. Uh, next for DRM. So me and Erin are planning an event. Well, to be fair, we're part of an event on the 1st of July, which is in rugby at the Squirrel. So that's music against living miserably. Um, so we're supporting Calm on that event. So it's just going to be a bit of music, a bit of fundraising. Um, then we've got an event with oh, Rory, he's not in there, Saldo. Yeah, I met him uh, this morning. Yeah, DRM uh, X Saldo on the 15th of July here at Mill Street. It's just like a meet and greet for, for mental health. He's got some energy, that boy. Yeah, I love uh, He's He's amazing as well. And then during the summer, obviously, me and Erin hopefully going to be planning on working on workshops for schools yep. delivering sort of September, September time. So, yeah, smashing amazing. the schools hopefully together. And then what, what does Bill need to work on next in order to become uh, a better man? Um, I think be, be honest and open in terms of not just how I feel, um, but how I act with people and try and sp like spread that around. Because if you're more open and honest, then other people around you are. Um, and I think that's important in terms of like being a better man, being a better person, like everybody is. Uh, and the other thing I think is kindness, killing with kindness, all that ugliness that's in the world, you know, just because someone's horrible to you, just kill them with, with kindness, be more kind to, it's, and it gives you a little buzz as well. If you're not saying we necessarily need to, you know, 
help people cross the road, you know, just saying morning to people, even small things like that give you a little bit of a buzz. And again, it's spreading that energy around so other people can be more kind. Amazing, mate. You're a top guy, man. I think for someone of 30, you've got a sensible head on your shoulders, <laughs> mate. Seriously, I'm, I'm dead impressed with what you've done. Like, you're doing a great thing. I think you're really inspiring. It's, it's been it's been brilliant chatting. Uh, I've loved it. It's been really cool, Cheers. man. Well, thanks for having me on. Mate, anytime. Um, where can people check out your stuff? Uh, yeah, so we're on all social media at We Are DRM. So that's W E A R E D R M. And I think it's worth pointing out that 25% of the profits yeah. go to Calm. Yeah, so 25% of our profits we use in community projects. So we don't just want to donate to charity, we actually want to be involved in the change ourselves. So, so what we're saying is get your, get your hands in your pockets and uh, yeah, do something good. Mate, thanks again. Appreciate it. What a guy. Thank you. Thank you, man.